I get a lot of questions about lighting, shadows, and highlights, and matching them. So I'm going to show you a little bit about techniques that I would use to do that. And uh, in this case, I have three layers off the bat. I have my foreground character. I have a fake light, which I've dropped in just to give us a direction that we know the image is being lit from. And then I have my background layer, which will set the stage. And so what I'm going to do now is begin matching the lighting of the area to my figure. So I have a bright backlight, which is top right and behind my model, and I need that to be apparent on my model and it to translate well with shadows and highlights. So I'm going to start off by creating a levels adjustment above my model. Right now I'm not going to do anything to it. I'll hit OK. Right click on it, create clipping mask. And now that it's clipped, which means it only affects the layer below it, I'm going to double click on it and now I will adjust it. I'm going to take my white output slider and drag it towards the center which will darken it down considerably and I'm going to take my mid input slider and drag it to the right which will continue to give it a little uh, shading and darkness and add contrast at the same time. Hit OK. Now I have a nice dark shaded character but I need the highlights to show up from where the light source should be hitting. So in order to do that, I'm going to take the layer mask, which was automatically created for me whenever I created a layer, uh, which is a levels adjustment. And I'm going to paint on it using the brush tool. You can go in and grab your brush tool, bring the opacity all the way up to 100%. If you right click, you can drag your hardness all the way down, which I recommend. You might leave it up just a bit, but in this case, I'm going to have it as soft as I can possibly get it and my master diameter I'm going to have just big enough to allow me to paint in a bit of a highlight so with black as my foreground color because you notice my mask is filled with white right now I'm gonna start painting in a little bit of a highlight with a large soft brush as I do this it's gonna give it a little bit of a glow as if that light we're actually hitting it. I recommend using a tablet for this, that way you can get a bit of pressure sensitivity. Uh, but if not, you can still accomplish this with a soft edge brush. And I'm going to continue to do it all along the surfaces that I feel like that light should be playing off of. And we'll continue along the back of the leg, do a little bit on the inside of the arm here as I feel like it should be striking that figure from that back source light. So I back out now and I've got a nice highlight which which looks good now and uh, it's actually a really nice start here to lighting it up. You can touch it up a little bit by uh, dragging your uh, size of the brush up and down and making it a little better refined. But I'm gonna do something else as well. I just wanna emphasize the fact that this is an extremely bright light. It's actually a lot brighter than what's showing up here. I'll show you another technique I might use. That is to create a blank layer above what I need to highlight. Also clipping mask, you'll notice, which if you already have a layer which is clipped, all you need to do is create a layer below that and it will automatically clip it for you. So now I have a blank layer with nothing on it. Once again, taking my brush, I'm going to hit D to reset my foreground background color and I want to switch my foreground color to white. So now I'm going to be painting with white and I'm just going to paint ever so slightly, same soft edge brush, some white highlights along the back here. What this will do is give more of an effect, especially to dark materials like the dark pants in this case, which may not pick up the highlights as well as the, uh, the legs and arms from the levels adjustment. Now you can do this with curves or with levels, but this is just another technique that you can use. It's nice to have a bag of tricks, and this is one that I do pretty frequently. I'm just giving a little bit of a white line there, and so that gives it even more of an outline uh, that can really make it pop. All right, now I need to match the ground and the surrounding area with the light source. I need a shadow coming from and underneath my model and in this case what I'm going to do is just create a blank layer below the model. After creating the blank layer I'm going to grab my lasso tool. I'm going to have it set to polygonal lasso tool and I'm going to begin making a shape with this lasso tool 
that I want to eventually become the shadow. I want it receding away from the light source. The light source is above and behind, so the shadow should fall strongly in front and off to the bottom left. So I'm just going to make a general shape here that will fit with the shoe. Now I'm going to do it on the other side as well, and to do that I just hold down shift while this is selected, and that will allow me to select again and I'm going to create where I think my shadow should be there. Close that selection. And now I need to fill this with a shadow color. Actually, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. You might fill it with black, but I find that that's not always the most realistic color of the shadow. Shadows are not always black and gray. So what I'm going to do is actually grab the color of the dirt, in this case, or the ground, with my color picker. And with that selected, I'm going to now fill my selection with that foreground color. You can do that by Alt Backspace. And then I'll deselect, Control D. Now I have the same color, but it's obviously not darker yet. What I'm going to do now is set that level to that layer to multiply. And it gives it a, a nice brown shadow, which prevents it from looking generic and black. So uh, now if I zoom in on that, I notice it looks nice in color, but it's a little harsh and hard around the edges. So I'm going to give it a bit of a blur. Go up to Filter. And uh, Filter Blur, Gaussian Blur. And you can view it in here if you want to preview it, or I have it checked to preview out here. I'm going to drag it uh, quite a bit down. I don't really want a whole lot of blur, just enough so that it doesn't have extreme sharp edges on it. So in this case, 2.4 is going to be about right for me, and I have a nice softer shadow. I also want my shadow uh, to get stronger as it gets closer to the source of the shadow. So I'm going to put a layer mask on the shadow layer. I'm going to grab my gradient tool, G for shortcut. Make sure I have a black and white on my gradient, and that it's set to linear gradient. And I'm just going to click outside the frame in this case and drag in towards where I want it to be stronger. And what it's going to do is just cause that uh, shadow to fade off as it gets further away from the source of the shadow. So now I have everything except for one last thing I want to do. I want to uh, lighten where the light should be hitting the ground just to give it more of a united feel. So I'll go down and right above my background layer, I'm going to create a curves adjustment. And I'm doing this so you can see the different ways that you could lighten or darken using different adjustments. Now in curves, I'm going to leave it on the RGB channel. Click and just drag up a point here. Give it a nice, uh, a nice arch. And we'll just leave it simple for right now. That'll work for our purposes. Now it's lightened everything, and we don't want everything lightened. So what I'm going to do is, uh, with the layer mask on the curves adjustment selected, I'm going to go to fill. Right now I have black as a foreground color, but even if I didn't, I could just fill using black and that's what I'm going to do. Hit OK. And it wipes it back and hides all those adjustments. So now I can grab a brush and using white as my foreground color, I can paint back in that lightness. So if you're not familiar with using layer masks or if you'd like to see more on isolation you can check out some of our other tutorials I encourage you to do that uh, so right now I'm just painting that back in with my soft edge brush once again just painting white on it and I get a little bit of a white um, bright glare there and see now I can go after the fact and readjust that curve if I decide I want it brighter or darker just hit OK and so now I have a nice uh, bright light shining on my ground. I have a nice highlight on my character and that's kind of a fast rough overview of some techniques you can use to shade and to highlight in order to match lighting in an image.